Hello and welcome to the session. This is part three. In this session, we're going to look at standardized financial statement. And in chapter three, we're going to, the overall se section is working with financial statement. So financial statements are very helpful for, for financial statement analysis. But the problem with financial statement is different companies might have different sizes of financial statement. So one company might be a multi-billion dollar company in terms of assets and liabilities. It's a large company. Then another company, it's just multi-million, and you might have a mom and pop store that's maybe worth a couple million dollars. So if you want to compare those companies, how are you going to compare a multi-million dollar company to a multi-billion dollar company? Is there a way to compare them? Well, from a dollar perspective, you can compare them. They're not comparable. But what you can do, you can try to factor the size out. How do we factor the size out? We express all the numbers as percentages. So we're gonna look at the balance sheet, we're gonna look at the income statement and convert the dollar amount into percentages. Why do we do, why do, we do that? Is to factor the size out, then the two companies are comparable from a decision-making uh, decision perspective. And we'll see how it works in a moment. Okay, so what we're going to do, the next thing we might want to do with the company that we are working with, Proofrock, is to compare it, is to compare it to something else, assuming there is a, assuming we do have that option. So let's see. So the next thing, the next thing we might want to do is compare the financial statement to those of similar companies. We would immediately have a problem. Of course, it's impossible to directly compare the financial statements of two companies because of, of the differences in sizes. For example, Ford and GM are serious rivals in the auto industry, but GM is much bigger than, and in terms of market share than Ford. So it's difficult to compare them directly. So what do we do? What we're gonna be using, so for that matter, it's difficult to compare financial statements from different points in time for the same company if the company size has changed. So the size problem is compounded if we try to compare GM and say Toyota. Now Toyota, they use a different even currency and they use a different accounting standard, which is they use the International Financial Reporting Standard and GM uses US GAAP. So they have different sizes, different currency, different accounting standard. So. To start, to start making comparison, one obvious thing we might try to do is to somehow standardize the financial statement. So what do we do? One common and useful way of doing so is to express everything as a percentage rather than a dollar amount. So in this section, we will look at two different ways of standardizing financial statements. So we're going to look at how do we standardize financial statements. Okay, to get started, it's useful to standardize financial statement. Uh, it, to get started, a useful way to standardize financial statement is to express each item on the balance sheet as a percentage of asset and to express each item on the income statement as a percentage of sales. The resulting financial statements are called common size financial statement. What does that mean? It means, remember, on the balance sheet, actually, I, have the I still have the balance sheet here. So look, at the balance sheet, we have the balance sheet here and we have cash. Let's work with 2014. On the balance sheet, we have cash and cash is 84 million. We have account receivable 165, inventory 393, total asset 642, property, plant and equipment 2.7 billion and total asset 3.3. Now, to compare, what we do, let's assume another company that's much smaller than this company. So how do we compare the two companies? What we do is we take each item on the balance sheet, such as cash, and divide it by total asset and find this as a percentage. So let me find this as a percentage. Okay, so now what we know, cash is 2.9%, 2.49% of assets. Now, now it's easier for me to compare 2014 to 2015 because we're going to factor the size out now. If we look at 2015, if I take cash, divide cash by total asset, cash is, let me just, I need to, give me one moment here. I need to 
There we go. Cash in 2015 is 2.93 of total asset. And we could do the same thing for account receivable. Account receivable was The count receivable was, let me, let me use, let me just fix the format. Give me one moment, please. 4.89 and of total asset. And in 2015, receivable is 5.24. So receivable went up. Cash went up, receivable went up in comparison to total asset. We could do the same thing for inventory again we have to turn everything into a percentage and inventory was 11.65 and in 2015 inventory represented 11.76 not much of a change okay and we could do the same thing for property plant and equipment and we could do the same thing for liabilities in comparison to total asset for example accounts payable represented the prior year Let's look at a percentage, 9.25 in 2015, liabilities represented 9.59, a little bit of an increase relative to total asset. So this is what we do. Now we can compare year to year or we can compare proof rock to another company. Okay, to proof sand, okay? It doesn't matter. Um, we could compare proof rock to another company that's in the industry that's even of a different size and this is what we mean by basically common size and this is basically let's take a look at this balance sheet what we did here as we expressed everything in a percentage okay 2.5 is this the same numbers yeah 2.5 two points here i it's i i, I used to to um, uh two point i they they're only using one, one decimal point. Okay, 2.5 versus 2.7. So notice cash went up. Uh, cash, cash in comparison to total asset from year to year went up by 0.2%. This is what we can see. So let's see what we, what, what do we see from this, from this picture. So notice here we see cash went up. Account receivable also increased from year to year. That's another account that increased. Account receivable increased. Inventory increased a little. Inventory increased a little. Property, plant, and equipment relative to last year, it went down. Okay. Although, if you notice, let me show you something. Property, plant, and equipment in a dollar figure, remember, it went up 149 million. If you remember from the prior session, if we took the difference between 2014 and 2015, in dollar amount, it went up. But if we look at the, at a common size, when we compare that increase to total asset, actually, it went down 0.7%. So that's why you have to take a look from a dollar perspective as well as a percentage perspective because the size relative to the total may be more important than just the dollar amount. Okay? Accounts payable went up. Um, notes payable went down, short-term notes, and overall current liabilities went down. So what do we say about this company? Is if, as, we, as, we, as we notice... Current asset went up, current liabilities went down. So what happened, the company is improving its liquidity. What is liquidity? Improving liquidity. And what is liquidity? Liquidity is the short-term ability to pay your debt. Do you have more current assets and less current liabilities, which is good. When it comes to long-term debt, long-term debt went down. So notice the company is deleveraging. And what's the deleveraging? Deleveraging means it's paying off its debt because notice, both of the debt went down. One is 0.1% and the other one is 3%. Notice common stock went up. It means we are relying more on equity, it seems. Common stock went up and retained earning went up because we made a profit. So once we look at it from a, from a percentage perspective, it helps, us, it helps us more compare what happened to the company. Notice equity used to be only 68%. Now equity is 72.2%. That's it. That's it. 4.1% 4, 4 increase in the capital structure of the company. We can immediately see this once we once we turn the financial statement into a common size financial statement. And the good thing, we can compare it to year to year, or we could compare companies of different sizes, of different sizes. Now we could do the same thing for the income statement. We can do the same thing for the income statement. And on the income statement, 
on the income statement, what we do is we look at everything as a percentage of sales. We look at everything as a percentage of sales. So basically we, we consider sales 100%. Then what we do, every item on the income statement, okay, we divide it by sales. So let me take a look, show you where this, this number came from. So if we're looking at, let me go back to the book and I need to go back to the prior session where, where we have the income statement. So if we go back to the prior session, this is where the income statement was given. Here's the income statement, all right? Here's the income statement. What we do is we take any number on the income statement, cost of goods sold, for example, will divide it by 2311, whoops, cost of goods sold 1344 divided by 2311 and that's that's going to give us 58.15 percent or 58.2 percent rounding okay this is 58.2 percent all right now for depreciation we could do the same thing we can take 276 divided by 2311 23 2311 and that's going to give us 11.9 and notice cost of goods sold is 58.2 depreciation is at 11.9 same thing for interest paid we can take 141 141 divided again by sales 2311 to find uh, it's 6.1 percent notice interest paid is 6.1 percent so the the uh, the common size income statement it tells us a few things beside that it's it's showing us um it it, it can it, it help us to compare company to company from different sizes it also shows us how much each item relative to sales because you're going to learn later in future chapters when we do financial planning sales drives everything else so that's why sales is an important figure. It's 100%. Everything else is driven by sales. What do we say here? How can we interpret these figures? So every time a company make, let's assume a $100 in sales, $100 in sales, $58.20 is cost of goods sold. $11.20 is depreciation. $29.90 is their earnings before interest and taxes. Now you could multiply this by hundred thousands or millions, it doesn't matter. This is per $100, you could do it per, for every dollar. Interest paid is $6.01. Then what we're left is $23.80. Taxes are 8.1%. Then the profit per, per $100 is 15.7. Now we could do the same thing as in terms of $1 in sales, then, you know, 58.2 pennies is cost of goods sold, so on and so forth. Now, it's much easier to compare, for example, Walmart to Target. If you're comparing Walmart to Target, Walmart is maybe five times, their sales is a little bit more than five times larger than Target. So from a dollar perspective, you cannot compare them, but you can compare them if you turn Target into Walmart into percentages, Target into percentages, then find out for every dollar in sales, how much do Walmart pays in cost of goods sold versus Target, because now you're using percentages. Now the two companies are comparable. For example, let's give you a quick example. For example, Tar Walmart, their sales is approximately 500 billion and Target, I'm using memory here, their sales is approximately 75 billion per year. Okay. so. Walmart is five times the size of it. So this is Walmart and this is Target. Now, cost of goods sold for Walmart, I'm just going to throw a number, is 320. And cost of goods sold for Target, why don't I look them up rather than doing this? So let me just go ahead and look them both up this way. Just guessing for no reason. So let's look, look up target first oops so this is target I know target did not do good today so it's gonna be down yep it's down eight dollars and 14 cent they had a bad day today so let's look at their financial statements that's not our concern for now so let's look at their financials and let's look at their income statement I'm going to look one, one, I'm just going to compare one, one number to one number. So I'm not going to do a lot of analysis here just to show you 
how common size financial statements help us. Come on. Oh. Oh, my computer's stuck. <laughs> 